The battle for the seas is about to begin. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to another glorious head-to-head -head battle between me and Pixelated Apollo. This was obviously taken from the head-to-head -head multiplayer campaign that me and him have been doing. I have about two more replays of this head-to-head -to, -head to go but until we've obviously finished it, and I have the final battle, which was unfortunately cut off from the stream. I don't know what happened, but that will be up on the channel, I think, after one more battle from this series, so just keep your eyes peeled for that. But yes, this battle was an extremely important one because this basically determined whether or not I could escape my island and go and start putting pressure on Apollo. It also meant if I was, you know, in control of the seas, I could then start trading, which would have a huge influx of currency to my island and to my faction because Apollo has been blockading me for about, I don't know, about 60, 70, 80 turns, probably even 100 turns, he has been blockading me. So, yeah, I haven't seen trade for a long time, and winning this battle would be absolutely huge at that. Over here, you can see my fleet is pretty decent. I've got some of these nice heavy boons, or at least one of these heavy boons right there, with 103 samurai on and 50 archers, which is really awesome. I have some of these firebomb ships as well, which do some serious damage, but they have really short range and obviously no armor whatsoever. The main part of my fleet is going to consist of these siege boons, which again are pretty decent, 50 archers on them, they'll do some good damage, and um, that's for sure. I also have one of these cannon boons as well, which I don't use amazingly in this battle, I need to keep it at a much larger distance than I did, I, I kind of threw it in a bit too close, but... Uh, yeah, it's going to be it. And for Apollo's fleet, again, he's going to have, you know, kind of similar ships. I do have the advantage in this, as you can see. But this was such an important battle that I felt like we had to go ahead and show it in the, uh, on the channel. Because, you know, this determines whether or not I can get off the island, which I've been stuck on for so goddamn long. You know, this determines so much in the head-to-head, -head, so... You know, winning here and winning here handily is also so important, because if Apollo can destroy my fleet... Museum cannons unfortunately missing. Um, yeah, if Apollo can do enough damage to my fleet or, you know, obviously defeat me here, he's going to be doing, you know, a great, great, uh, you know, positioning on his side of things because he's going to then be able to rebuild his fleet and then continue to put pressure on me and continue to blockade me. He has just by one volley of fire arrows went ahead and set my cannon boon on fire, which was really unfortunate. Because um, again, this thing doesn't really take much arrow damage because obviously as you can see all the arrows get stuck However, setting it on blades is pretty easy. So I just put this thing way too close to Apollo's archers um, But I am doing some really good damage, you know almost sinking one of his ships, which is great over here on this side as well We can see but I've actually went ahead and engaged his uh, gun boat right there with one of my siege boons And the siege boons are really tanky and they have a ton of archers So they're gonna kind of just hold up all the try and basically draw a line in the sand in a sense of just holding this line right here and keeping his big ships at bay whilst the rest of my fleet does go in. He also is trying to push one of his bomb, uh, fire bomb ships in down the middle, which is a smart move because these things can do so much damage. You can see they're about to throw their explosives. Um, luckily, though, my you know, siege boons are a little bit tankier, so they're not going to get completely destroyed or go down immediately. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to take this out. And you can also see I'm also moving around these, these other ships, and you can see more cannon fire coming around from, I think, the siege boon, actually. Yeah, the siege boon volleyed in on it as well, which really helped out. And I actually might prevent this ship from even going in. And oh, we also have the rocket ship as well. I totally forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, I have a rocket ship as well right here. These guys shoot out, as you can see, fireworks like the 4th of July. And yeah, luckily that was enough to rout this fire of this um, bomb throwing ship because they do do so much damage if they are left alone, which is really nice. So as you can see, I've kind of taken a, a small advantage. I think I've lost one ship so far and Apollo has lost two, which is really, really nice to me. He is heavily focusing down this cannon boom bow and it'll be an advantage, you know, a great kind of, I guess, win for him if he does manage to kill this thing because I think this thing costs about three and a half grand and it takes five turns to build. So, you know, if you keep on sinking these expensive ships then you're going to be able to outproduce uh, each other so you know you was a real big focus right now but i'm just trying to get this thing the hell out of here i'm using trying to use my you know bigger siege tower boons to to cover for the fire ship as well because i do not want that cannon to go down i also have this one like a uh, catapult ship as well which is just constantly bombarding his tower boons. But, you know, even still, I just don't think this ship was really worth it. Because it, it does take up a slot. You can only have, like, 14 ships in your navy. So, uh, you know, doing that is kind of pretty important to 
not wasting it. You can see I'm basically completely covering this uh, ship right now, trying to get my cannon boon to escape. But I think at the moment it's repairing, if I'm not mistaken, because it's very close to just being set ablaze and, and routing, which would really suck. The rocket ship's coming in as well. Unfortunately, you're missing us. So kind of a problem with the rocket ship is only a handful of them do go in. And there you go. The cannon boon does actually, unfortunately, surrender due to the fire, which just sucks so much. Because as I said, it's such an expensive ship. And I just, I brought it way too close to Apollo's line. And I got punished because of that. Um, but uh, luckily, I've managed to kind of break the center of Apollo's fleet. You can see a few of these ships here. The smaller ships just being completely taken care of now, which is great for me. I've also managed to kill a bunch of these smaller ships over on the other side as well. And now it's just simply a, a time to kind of reform up my ship. But again, Apollo is doing some serious damage. I'm being quite careless at this point because I see the balance of power so in my favor. I'm like, yeah, we've got this one. We just need to clear this one up. But, you know, I'm letting these expensive ships again. This ship, I think, takes three turns to build. I'm letting these ships kind of go to waste. And, uh, yeah, it's not great for me because... You know, every ship really does count when we are on two different separate islands. So now I'm just looking to quickly surround this ship right here. Try and take it out. And then I want to quickly, you know, move around. You can see I'm moving the heavy boon over to hopefully deal with uh, some of his bigger ships. I'm also trying to set a blaze to this one. I've got my rocket artillery coming in. Beautiful stuff right there. And that's actually managed to rout and surrender this ship, which is awesome. Because the thing is, in Shogun 2, when you get a ship to surrender, you capture that ship. So you can use it to your own advantage, which is so nice. And now the big boy is making his way in. You can see that one dude. That one dude is going to reel in the ship. Come on, like this. Just bring that bad boy in. Yeah, it's bring us closer. With the archers covering fire as well is lovely to see. I'm pretty sure the uh, the thing is a little bit glitched on this. But even if I just hold him in place, it's good enough for me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this one man isn't going to work. Normally, they need multiple people to throw them. The grappling hooks. But I'm actually not sure. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. The overall battle, though, is getting pretty hectic right now. As Apollo does move in his gunboat right, uh, right over here. I mean, it's severely messed up. It's been getting hammered by artillery, rocket ships everything else maybe it's 4th of july up in here and thankfully i do manage to take it out i was luckily point blank shooting that sh uh, that ship right there and it does end up surrendering um, now it's just simply this last ship right there so as you can see i managed to secure this battle and this is so important in the campaign because winning this battle basically gives me sea dominance and allows me to start blockading apollo which will then really uh, you know heavily affect his economy another kind of massive hit comes in so that you know now that i'm going to be blockading apollo i'm going to be killing all of his trade routes that's going to severely hurt his economy meaning he can't produce as many armies and that's going to basically be the, the landing point of me invading you know shimazu land me invading apollo and trying to end this one and you know because this isn't turn 50 when apollo invaded me i'm going to have the infrastructure i'm going to have armies to attack him on multiple fronts i'm going to have navies to harass him also have a bit of friendly fire going on right there um so yeah you know because this is turn like 170 or whatever i'm gonna be in a much greater position to put pressure on apollo now that i've got dominance over the seas and i have the infrastructure to back it up so winning this battle was so goddamn crucial i just you know it was just such a necessary engagement to really uh you know further the campaign and finally start getting back at him because you know, we've been invaded since turn 50, and as I said, it's like turn 170 now uh, by the time this battle is being played. So, you know, really, it was just so important that we did manage to secure a victory here, secure a W, and now, you know, the tables will turn, and I will start blockading Apollo, and it will just be so great. So if we take a look at the kills, you can see that, you know, I deployed 15 ships, he deployed 10. I outnumbered him so heavily, Jesus. I mean, that's mainly just because of the bigger siege boons I have, but even still, I mean, actually, no, that's also... I also had a reinforcement fleet that didn't play a role in it. So I don't think I had that many. But yeah, I had five more ships. I only lost one of my ships. Um, I guess the other ones that surrendered didn't get completely destroyed. And we managed to sink everything he had, which was really good. Some great experience for a bunch of my ships. The Siege Tower Boons getting lots of experience. They really are the MVPs of the, the sea for sure. And um, these my... I think this was my reinforcement fleet which just didn't turn up. So yeah, I was mainly just using this the entire time. So I don't think I had as many ships as it showed. Um, apparently they did get some kills though. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. Oh well, it, I mean it doesn't really matter. But yeah, there we go. That's going to be the battle. 
Um, I'll be sure to post the next two. We have one, we have two major land battles which have 40 v 40 units and basically, you know, spell the direction of this campaign, how it ended, and the, you know, the final battles. And unfortunately, as I said, the final battle wasn't caught on stream, which is just so frustrating after all that time that the stream cut out like midway through. But don't worry, we'll cover it in the battle replay. Um, also, I'm going to be having like really elite soldiers in my armies. I think in the last replay, I have like hero units. So if you want to see the top tier units, be sure to tune into that. I'm sure me and Apollo will start a new campaign fairly soon uh, as we get closer. You know, maybe Three Kingdoms when that comes out in a couple months. Or even just doing a Fall of a Samurai for fun. Um, we'll, see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.